evening and happy Sabbath. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Oh, come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this virtual space, whether you're in Facebook, whether you're in YouTube, or if you're in the Conscience and Justice Council virtual convention, go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let us thank him for what he's done. Let us give thanks for what he has done. Let us give thanks for as he brought us through another week, through trials and tribulations, through triumphs and celebrations. It's always a good day to give God some praise. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Come on, you can do better than that. David said, if I had 10,000 tongues, it would not be enough to praise the Lord. Come on, folks. Don't be shy, don't be scared. This is the time to celebrate, to leave your worries behind or to take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Oh, come on, folk, you can do better than that. Go ahead and tell your family, your friends, and those in your sphere of influence, there's a word from the Lord tonight. Let me say it again. There's a word from the Lord tonight through his maid servant, Reverend Dr. Renita Weems. And we're just happy that you are a part of our Conscience and Justice Council 2021 virtual convention. Our theme is hate and liberty, statements, conversations, or actions. Let's bow our heads as we invite the Lord in this space. Lord, we love you, we magnify you, and we lift you up. And Lord, we are seeking a deeper encounter with you as we ponder the theme of this convention. Lord, we know that sanctification is a process of a lifetime. So prune us, rebuke us, build us, and continue to sanctify us. So when people come in contact with us, they don't notice our demographics by what we look like, but they notice us by our behavior, by who we are and whose we are. Forgive us from our sins, O oh God, and restore unto us the joy of your salvation. So when you come again in the clouds of glory, we can all be saved without the loss of one. In the worthy and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Reverend Dr. Renita J. Wings is a distinguished biblical scholar, author, academic administrator, public intellectual, and ordained elder in the African Methodist Episcopal Church since 1984. Her esteemed and insightful publications, commentaries, and articles on modern faith, race, and religion, and womanism and faith make her a widely sought after inspirational speaker and academic lecturer. Reverend Weems was the first African-American woman to give Yale University's prestigious Beecher Lectures in 2008. She is the author of several critically acclaimed books. Among these are Just a Sister Away, I Asked for Intimacy, showing Mary how women can share prayers and wisdom and the blessings, let me say this, and the blessings of God. She's also wrote, What Matters Most, 10 Passionate Lessons from the Song of Solomon, Listening for God, A Minister's Journey Through Silence and Doubt, won the Religious Communicators Council prestigious 1999 Wilbur Award for excellence in communicating spiritual values to the secular media. Her beautifully crafted and compelling words invite and strengthen audiences to explore them, oh, to explore their hopes and fears, call upon women to support and empower one another and show them pathways to do so. Reverend Dr. Renita J. Wings received her PhD from Princeton Seminary in 1989 and was the first African-American woman, let me say it again, folks, 
was the first African American woman to earn a doctorate in Old Testament study. Let this be really clear. The preacher is coming from the Old Testament tonight. Dr. Weems has taught at Vanderbilt Divinity School, Spelman College, and has served as academic dean at American Baptist College in Nashville, Tennessee. She received her MDiv from Princeton Seminary and her undergraduate degree from Wesley College. Born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, and ordained in the African American Episcopal Church, Reverend Dr. Weems currently resides in Nashville, Tennessee, serving in ministry alongside her husband, Reverend Martin Espinosa, at Ray of Hope Community Church. My brothers and my sisters, let me just be clear. There's a preacher in the house tonight who has been anointed by the Holy Ghost for such a time as this. You may call her queen. You may call her doctor. You may call her mother. But let's be real clear. She's an anointed woman of God, adequately and, ab and ably prepared to deliver a message concentrating on the theme, hate and liberty, statements, conversations, or actions. So after the musical presentation, the next voice you will hear is God's main servant, who's uniquely qualified, gifted, talented, experienced, and loves to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's give a warm welcome and pray for the Reverend Dr. Renita J. Weems. Today, 
Ma, 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 ma. Come on and sing to us about the atoning power of the blood of Jesus. Thank you for that beautiful song that stirs the spirit. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. And I'm so grateful to God for just the invitation to be with you this evening on this very important conversation, this very courageous moment by uh, the Adventist Church, uh, hate and liberty statements, conversations, or actions. I, I love the title itself. I, I think it is bold. I think it's courageous on your part. I think it's prophetic on your part. So I want to thank you for inviting me and thank you for uh, really giving me this opportunity to share with you, but also for my opportunity of just to come in about a, a 30 minutes before the last session ended um, to be stretched and to grow and to be blessed. I praise God for each one of you. Now, the, the evening is late. It is, they would say, far spent into the evening. And I don't want to uh, lose anyone. I, I uh, want to share. I want to, I want to hopefully bring some words of inspiration. Want to be as, as timely as I possibly can. But I also, I uh, don't want to wear out my my welcome. Uh, so I'm going to invite you. Um, first, let me just say I am here in uh, Columbia, Maryland, at another event, and I'm very uh, I, I'm very grateful to be able to have made it possible in my own schedule to be a part of this. I want history to record that I fellowshiped with and served the Adventist Church in this crucial moment in history, in our country and in our churches, in our faith walk, in our religious journeys. I am delighted to be able to, for it to be said that I was of service to my sisters and my brothers in the Adventist uh, family. If you have your Bibles, and I so know that you do, I'm going to invite you, uh, and I, I, I'm at this point in this post, in this, uh, well, we are we are in this pandemic moment of, of the church world. Um, we have all found ourselves having to edit and 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 adapt and adjust to this virtual world of doing conferences and of preaching. So whereas in the, if we were in our sanctuaries, we would read these 20 something verses of a particular passage. I try not to read that long, even though you do really need to know the whole passage in order to go with me or in order to just be, refresh your memories. But I am reading from Genesis, the 37th chapter, and Brother Woods was very on time. He's being prophetic because while my PhD is in the Old Testament or Hebrew Bible, I often also do preach from uh, the early Christian scriptures of the New Testament. So he said, and she's going to be preaching from, and I'm like, well, tonight she is, but there's another time that she might not have been. But Genesis, the 37th chapter. And let's see if I can, I want to just jump down to verse 21 through 22. Most of us know this story, the story of Joseph and his brothers, Joseph's arrogant a lofty dream, his brother's uh, jealousy and covetousness and rage at him uh, and their plot to kill him because of his dream, Joseph, and their plot against him and, and all the ensuing things. So just one, that, that was my attempt to abbreviate the scripture and to bring you on board and try not at nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time um, to uh, read the entire passage. But verses 21 through 22. Reuben heard the brothers talking and intervened to save Joseph. We're not going to kill him. No murder. Now go ahead and throw him in this pit out here in the wild, but don't y'all hurt him. Reuben planned to go back later and get him out 
and take him back to his father. And when Joseph reached his brothers, they ripped off the fancy coat he was wearing and grabbed him and threw him into a cistern or a pit, a cistern or a pit. And the cistern was dry and there wasn't any water in it. And then they sat down to eat their supper. Looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites on their way from Gilead and their camels loaded with spices, ointments, perfumes to sell in Egypt. Uh, and Judah said, Judah said, brothers, what are we going to get out of killing our brother Joseph and concealing the evidence? And let's sell him to the Ishmaelites, but let's not kill him. He is after all our brother, our own flesh and blood. And his brothers agreed, including Reuben. By that time, the Midianite traders were passing by. His brothers pulled Joseph out of the cistern and sold him for 20 pieces of silver to the Ishmaelites who took Joseph with them down to Egypt. I think I'll just end right there and not go all the way down to verses 31, 32, and a little bit later. But looking particularly at this verse, hmm, verse verses 21 through 22. And when Reuben heard the brothers talking, he intervened to save Joseph. We're not going to kill him. No murder. But let's go ahead and throw him into this cistern out in the wild. But don't hurt him. I want you to think with me this evening for the time that is mine. And I would love for you to type it there in the chat box. Uh, and I'm and that way I can see that you're interacting and with me. Redeeming Reuben. Redeeming Reuben. Let's not kill him. Nah. Let's not murder him. Let's just throw him into the pit but no murder, redeeming Reuben. Many years ago, I heard a sermon called The Reuben Option. It was preached by the South African theologian whom everyone should hear, Alan Bosak, in which he condemned Reuben for making a compromise with his brothers is taking instead of taking a stand against his brothers. I never forgot that sermon. Well, the truth is that I have, I, 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 I have, it has, it, it, it has stayed with me. I, 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 I have forgotten what he said, that is Bosek said, but I never forgot the impact of the sermon. I forgot his premise, but I haven't forgotten what the sermon made me feel. And maybe that is the gift of a great sermon, that perhaps we might remember a phrase, a sentence, a thought, a concept, but how did it make you feel? Did it arrest you? Did it, did it captivate you? Did it change you? Alan Bosak, the Reuben option, changed me. So our focus this evening is on Reuben, which is, which is odd. I, I, if I had to ask you, how many of you have ever heard a sermon on Reuben? About Reuben, not where Reuben is casually mentioned, but about Reuben. I, I, it, 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 it is a, our focus tonight is on Reuben, which is odd because typically the focus of the church is on the obvious characters, the protagonists, the main characters, the dominant characters, the celebrities. This is not about Joseph, who is the protagonist. It is about this minor character by the name of Reuben. 
you know, we've been introduced up to chapter 37 with Joseph. It's Joseph's narrative. Joseph is the heir. Uh, he is the one who would who would ultimately redeem Israel, the people of Israel, uh, Jacob's uh, tribes. Uh, uh, he, he's young, he's gifted, he's arrogant, he's flashy, he's obnoxious. It is Joseph's story. He is the first son of Rachel, Jacob's beloved wife. He's not just a son of Jacob, but he's the son of the preferred wife. Uh, uh, Jacob gives him a special robe and uh, uh, traditionally translated as the coat of many colors. The Hebrew term is probably refers to a coat with a long sleeve or to an ornamented coat. Oh, you know it is supposed to be, you all know this is supposed to be Joseph's story. The motif, however, is a very familiar one. Uh, that's why the story also resonates with us, isn't it? It is the motif of the younger son uh, 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 being the beloved son that is Joseph and the resultant family strife, uh, which favor, which favor, which favor produces, uh, uh, is prominent within Genesis. The, it begins with the murder of a, a Cain and Abel, the story of the Cain and Abel. It continues with the story of Isaac and Ishmael. It's the story of Jacob and Esau. It's the story of strife and of, uh, uh, of jealousy and and it is the story of, of the, the, the younger son becoming the beloved son over the older son. It is the story of Cain and Abel. It's the story of Isaac and Ishmael. It is the story of, of even Jacob and Esau. And now it is the story of Joseph and his brothers. In fact, our scripture this evening is about sibling rivalry. And it, which comes close to murder and sets in motion a chain of events. I've got to do the, that's why it means to have a PhD. I've got to do the historical thing. So permit me to, as, as though, even though we don't have much time, but permit me for the sake of, 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 of building a scaffold for the sermon to just bring us on board. After all, we've all been uh, uh, pandemic sized in our homes and you may not have read your Bible for a long time. You may not have been reading as you ought to. So permit me to just break it down a little bit. It is the story of Joseph, supposedly, ostensibly. Joseph is the narrator, is who the narrator wants us to focus on. He is the protagonist, the hero, the dreamer, the deliverer. The signs are there. The narrator gives you the hints through the dreams. You sense it, but you don't know it yet. He is Joseph. He is uh, 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 Joseph. Uh, it's supposed to be the, na the, the narrative uh, a focus of our attention when we preach on uh, uh, about on the Sabbath, about this passage here in Genesis 37. We're supposed to be focusing on the obnoxious Joseph. He is the protagonist. He's the lead character. He's the man. He is loathed, however, by his brothers. He is lacking in common sense, or simply a bit self-absorbed. He, he, he dreams two different dreams with the same message, and the message being that he will become preeminent in the family. His brothers and even his parents will bow down to him according to his own. He's an arrogant little cuss, as they would say down home where I come from. He's an arrogant little so-and-so and so-and-so. Seemingly unaware of his brother's feelings for him, he eagerly shares their, his dreams with them. They hate him both because of the dream and because he insists upon talking about them and because he is the beloved of his father. Come on, I've just given you just, a, just, just an abbreviated version. And yet something happens here that demands our attention tonight. He's brash, he's irritating, he's annoying. He deserves a good whipping at least. He's so naive. He's so callous about his brothers. And the story is told that when his brothers see him coming out in the field, he having been sent out to the field to go fetch his brothers, a plot, they plot to kill him. It's a, it's a very popular narrative of the younger son. And yet what happens? The brothers resolve to kill the dreamer. The dream is stronger 
than their resolve, but they desire to kill the dreamer. Isn't that often what happens? People want to kill the dreamer. They want to kill, uh, but they can't kill the dream, but they want to kill the dreamer. Ah, but the older brother, that's where we're going tonight. The older brother, it is the decision of the older brother. It is the one who should know better. It is the one who comes to the conference online. It is the one who who who, who pontificates and, and knows the rules, who, who knows Adventism, who knows the, uh, the doctrines of the church, who knows the polity, who knows history, who has studied history, who understands race relations. It is the one who is wise and seasoned, who recognizes the jealousy and the covetedness of the others and the and the passions of the other but it is the brother Reuben that is the focus of our time because I believe that the church is more like Reuben than it is like Joseph I believe there's more of Reuben us Reuben in each of us than there is in Joseph I believe that the reason why the church has not been the church the church of Jesus Christ, the one that he is coming back for. I, it is because there is more Reuben in us than there is even Joseph in us, as obnoxious as he was. There's not as much dreaming in us as it is as in plotting and compromising and jealousy and wishy-washiness. Ah, uh, Joseph is arrogant, but at least he has a dream. Or oh, he's brash and he's young and he's ambitious, but he sees further down the road than the rest of his brothers. Ah, uh, the mention of Reuben. He is Reuben. One of, out of jealousy and hatred, the brothers decide to kill Joseph. But thankfully, and like a good Christian man, like a good Jewish man, Reuben intervenes. He heard it and he said, let's not kill him. Reuben is the, the person who knows better, but doesn't quite do better. He says, let's not kill him. Let's just throw him in the pit. I, I'm talking about the, those of us who choose. It's, it's easier to be Reuben than it is to be a prophet. It's easier to be Reuben than it is to take a solid stand against evil. It is it's easier. You, 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 you didn't quite kill him, but you didn't quite deliver him either. I'm talking about Reuben. Reuben's motivation is part self-serving because after all he is the older son he he has to go and explain to the father what happened to joseph and so he's got skin in the game he doesn't want to lose his own position before the father but he too hates joseph i'm talking about the church that is wishy-washy i'm talking about the church that's got some skin in the in the game of white supremacy i'm talking about the church that's got a skin got some skin in the capitalistic game so it's not quite convinced it's not quite invested in overturning capitalism it doesn't want to dismantle white supremacy it, it just wants to make it a little bit more palatable it wants to make it a little bit softer, a softer patriarchy, a softer racism, a, a, a softer capitalism. But we're not going to, we don't want a new heaven and a new earth. We just want um, a, 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 a nicer heaven and a nicer earth. Oh, I hope somebody is listening to me tonight talking about Reuben. Uh, he, Reuben says he, uh, the problem is that he's, he's unstable. He, he's a pragmatist. Come on, those of you who are the pragmatic ones online who, who came on back at four, who are 43 of you who came on back tonight and said, you know, I'm, I, I'm going to stay with it. It's a little bit late and all, all, all the others have gone off, but 
there's this colored girl who's preaching tonight. I, I, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not going, I'm going to, I'm going to listen, but I'm going to also watch television. I'm not going to turn off uh, my computer, but I'm going to look like I'm paying attention. But, but before, for, 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 I mean, I want to look, I want to, I want to present to the, to the black people that I'm online right now, but I'm not really paying attention because all the great people were before. I, this this says well anyway I you just I'm just messing with everybody I'm tired I'm exhausted I'm sleepy so I'm apt to say everything that I'm thinking tonight in the name of Jesus he's a pragmatist he doesn't believe in getting into a fight if he can't win he's his name is Reuben he doesn't believe in wasting energy on things that won't really change his name is Reuben he doesn't believe in crying over spilled milk his name is Reuben he doesn't, he, he doesn't believe in throwing money at a lost cause. His name is Reuben. He doesn't believe in walking around like Joseph with his head in a cloud. He's a pragmatist. His name is Reuben. I'm talking about those uh, who, are, who come to these conferences and be a part of this conversation. And we're just so practical. We're just so pragmatic. We're, we're just such realists about these kinds of things. Uh, we are the gradualist. Uh, we are, we, you know, that we are, we are the ones. Uh, um, I, I don't see color. Uh, 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 you know, they, they are the, ga the gaslighters. Uh, we call them gaslighters. The, the kids, the Black Lives Matter the kids call them uh, uh, the gaslighters. Uh, are you sure uh, that's what really happened when you come back to tell them what happened with the latest police shooting? Uh, it's not all about race. Oh, they're just so pragmatic. Uh, not all cops are bad or racist. Oh, they're just so pragmatic. Not all Black people face racism. You know, Reuben, uh, he's so pragmatic. I'm not going to kill Joseph, but I'm not going to save Joseph either. I'm not going to waste my energy killing him, but I'm, 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 I'm too moral. I'm too moral to kill him, but I'm, I'm not moral enough to save him. Uh, black people should just comply or they, and they wouldn't get killed. Uh, people might listen if they protested more peacefully. You know, Reuben, come on, I'm just trying to paint who Reuben is tonight. There's no need to worry about the police if you're not doing anything illegal. You know Reuben. He, if, uh, now, why can't they be peaceful like Martin Luther King was peaceful? You know Reuben. Do you know Reuben? He says, let's not kill him. Just throw him in the pit. Reuben knows what is right, but he can't bring himself to do what is right. He prevents his brothers from killing Joseph, but he doesn't go out of his way to save Joseph. He doesn't want Joseph's blood on his hand, but he's not, but he, Reuben, isn't altogether innocent either. He sees what's going on, but he has no skin in the game. He, he doesn't lie to the father, but neither does he tell Jacob the truth. He's not a bigot, but neither will he take a public stand for social justice. She loves her brother Joseph, but she loves herself even more. She believes in going to church, but she just doesn't believe in joining and getting involved in church. You know Reuben. She doesn't throw rocks, but she doesn't stop those who do throw rocks. Rocks. She won't kill but at the same time, she won't say who did because she doesn't want to get involved. Her name is Reuben. She doesn't like what's going on, but she doesn't believe in getting involved. Upset at the next killing on the streets of Ferguson or Baltimore or New York, but he says it doesn't take all of that marching and protesting. Reuben doesn't mean any harm, but Reuben isn't capable of doing what is right. Reuben doesn't tell the racist jokes at Thanksgiving family dinner, but Reuben also doesn't challenge the uncle who does tell the, rest, the racist jokes. 
She believes in feeding the poor and doesn't mind showing up to work in the soup kitchen. But she doesn't believe in doing anything about poverty. Systemic evil in high places. Reuben doesn't hate anyone, but doesn't love anyone either. Certainly not enough to risk losing anything. Have I exhausted you yet? Have you heard from God yet? Is there an ouch in the house yet? And it is all of us. There is some Reuben in all of us who do not want to be inconvenienced by justice. Who doesn't inconvenienced by diversity? Doesn't want uh, to have to be inconvenienced by equity. It was Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the German theologian and martyr, who says silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act, said Edmund Burke. All that is required for evil to triumph is for good men and women to do nothing. It is the Reuben option. But as for me, when I read Reuben's story, to let you know that I'm not just talking to you, but I'm talking to myself as well. I'm talk there is some Reuben in all of us. Uh, it is the Reuben in the man, the male, uh, the masculinist who's listening to me tonight and who knows uh, that in, even in the most liberated man, there is a, there's a sexist. That even in the most progressive white person, uh, lingering racism, even in the most woke black person, there's bigotry. When I read Reuben's story, I feel more tenderness toward him than anger, probably because I have had some Reuben-like moments of my own. And you can share with me that you, you don't have to tell me what your Reuben-like moments have been, but if you yourself have to say, I. Dr. Williams, I, I saw some Reuben in me. The side of me that will only goes so far for what is right. That is, that is afraid to take the next step. That is afraid to speak up. The, too afraid uh, to challenge. Afraid of what this is going, what this is going to mean for me and mine. I have clearly known what was right and I chose what was wrong. I believe it was the former president of Morehouse College, Benjamin Mays, who said that, that education is good and education takes you only so far because you can know what is right and choose what is wrong. You can see the light and choose darkness. You can know what is holy and choose what is unholy. There is some Reuben in all of us. This is not just about if we had known better, we would do better. There is in all of us something wretched about us in terms of our own ego-centeredness, our own self-preservation, our own small-mindedness. So as we have our conversations and talking about love and liberty and justice, the truth of the matter is, it is a heart matter. It is the matter of our hearts. I guess I feel something toward Reuben uh, because uh, Reuben is the one who, who, who wants to do right. But the truth of the matter is he's invested in what is wrong. 
He wants to challenge his brothers, but he but the real there are rewards. He for standing with them. His father chapters later, I need to move on quickly. His, his father chapters later, uh, Jacob on his deathbed would look at Reuben and say to him, you are, you are wishy-washy. The truth of the matter is, I love you, boy, but you have always been unstable like water. You's a wishy-washy, so-and-so and so-and-so. You, and, and his father like cut right. It's like, you're my son, I love you. But the truth of the matter is, you've always made compromises. What is my point tonight? I'm, I'm here as much of a thinker at, uh, uh, as, a, as a professor. I just finished a class with, for Howard University. So right now I'm, I'm feeling more of a, of a teacher than I am as a pre than I am a preacher. But, but the notion that I, if I leave you with nothing else, it's the thousand little compromises that we make every day that eventually result as one writer said, in the lost of our souls. Can I say that again? Because someone needs to write that, type that. It's some, a writer once said, it's the thousand little compromises that we make every day that eventually result in the lost of ourselves. Reuben could stand there and say, let's not kill him, let's throw him into the pit, because he had already made a thousand little compromises. We believe, we, all of us, I, I often tell my students uh, who are, are divinity students who are imagining themselves to one day become pastors, mega pastors, great preachers, great orators, great leaders, great so civil rights and social justice leaders. They see themselves in the bright light. They see themselves on MSNBC, CNN. They see themselves leading marches and thousands of people. And I often say to them, you think that when you... You think that when you rise and, 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 and come into your kingdom, you will, you will know to do right. But it is right now in the writing of my papers that we make the thousand little compromises of, of plagiarism, lying about why you're turning it in late. Ah, uh, you know, wasting your time. It's the thousand little compromises that make you lose your soul, that by the time the stakes are higher, the time now when you must take a larger stand, you have compromised on so many small things that you've lost your soul. You can't say no to evil. You believe I, I would never have done that. Oh, yes, you did. Because you did it on the small things. And by the time the stakes were higher, by the time it was time to, to suffer public humiliation at your highest point in your career, you could not resist temptation because you had lied over the little things. I love to tell the story that as this is back in when we used to sign books. I loved ink pens. I, I, I love fountain pens. I, I love big pens. And, and, and every time someone handed me a pen to sign one of my books and it was a pen that I loved, I don't care if it was a dollar pen or if it was a Mont Blanc, two or three or $400 pen. I always, when they left it and walked away, I always had a moral dilemma because I love pens that glide across the pages. And I just, and I had, it was an ethical decision. Do I give it back to her? Oh, she, well, she left it. Why should I? I should keep it. I mean, after all, she left it. I love this pen. I, it only cost about a dollar nineteen, But each time I pocketed the pen that didn't belong to me, saying, she's gone. I lost something. Something died. So that when the stakes get higher, when there is a risk of public humiliation and a national shame, because I kept pocketing the little big pins, it's called the Reuben option. It was not big, but neither was it small. And each time I gave in, 
Each time I roared in laughter, each time my brother, you roar in laughter as one of your boys, uh, just kind of nudge you with his elbow about and a comment about a woman as she's walking past with a, a very shapely body and you roar with laughter. Ah, uh, something is lost. Each time we turn our eyes to a, a turn a blind eye to something we probably should have spoken something within the song says i cannot explain something within all that i know is that there is something within that we lose reuben so that when the stakes are higher uh, we can't say yes because we are so accustomed to having said no we're so accustomed to the thousand little compromises Ah, uh, the church that puts its head in the sand. Ah, uh, religion is by its nature, isn't it? Is that what Karl Marx meant? No, it's not just the open of the people. Religion is by its nature conservative. Do we not become saved? Do we not join church? Do we not become religious as a way of protecting the status quo, of not changing, of not growing, of not risking, of not challenging the status quo. That's why we become religious. At least that's what our children say. That's why they walk away. And it is, it is the day, what, what, who, I can't remember who said, because right now I'm just kind of sleepy and tired, so I'm just going to let it riff, as the jazz writers would say. I'm just going to let it riff a little bit. And ah, that, that notion that the day the revolutionary, the day after they win, they become a conservative. Ah, you're a revolutionary until the day you have power, and then you are reactionary. It's called the Reuben. It's called the Reuben option. It is called the ways in which we who know right, know what is right. Benjamin May says, but we, we choose wrong anyway. And it wasn't because we didn't know better. It's because we are invested and there are rewards. Racism has rewards. Sexism has rewards, is rewarded. Homophobia has its perks. Yeah. Yeah. Capitalism has, is profitable. Yes. Keeping this church conservative benefits somebody. Isn't that what liberation theology challenges? Womanist theology, queer theology challenges. Be upfront about your investments. Name your position. Admit. You love God, but all oh, it's nice to have an American Express card. Benefit, membership has its benefits. Oh, it's nice. But Dr. Weems, I, I, I'm not a slave owner. I never owned slaves. I, I, what do they mean? I mean, why do they call us that? Why do they call us those names? I mean, my, I don't care. Yeah, but baby, you've got centuries of wealth you got centuries behind you, whether you own it yourself. You've got centuries of wealth. You undergird it. You go into the bank and ask for a loan for the gentrified house where my grandmama used to live. And baby, that's, that's a door that opens to you that does not automatically open to me. Ah, uh, Reuben is the church, the pastors, the Christians, the church people who quote scripture to protect themselves from changing, who, who quote scripture to protect themselves from acting, who use the Bible to, to keep their heads in the sand. Um, Dr. Williams, Lord have mercy, where are you going? Well, let me try to figure out where I'm going to go tonight. Yeah that it is the thousand little compromises of Reuben. And you cannot have this conversation that you've been having over these last couple of days, or you anticipate having over the next couple of days, 
without the honest scrutiny. The old folks used to say, shine a light on me, Lord. Shine, shine. If you see anything, let me be honest. Let me be honest about my own arrogance. Let me be honest about my own pragmatism. Let me be honest about my being a realist. Let me be honest that I am invested as a white man. I am invested as a white woman. I am invested as a man. I am invested in the way things are. And sharing power hurts. Lord, have mercy. Here's how we close. Well, close, get closer to the close. Every generation must redeem Reuben. Every generation must ask the Lord to shine a light on my generation. Every generation, uh, one writer says, uh, uh, every generation has its own Berlin Wall. I'll never forget that sentence. I love that sentence. Every generation has its own Edmund Pettus Bridge. Every generation has its own Tiananmen Square. Every generation has its own Ferguson. Every generation has its, has its, has its appointment with evil. Every generation has its appointment to make some decisions about how it's going. Not just every individual. We're not talking. We're here tonight as the church. We're not here as just individuals. We're talking about the Adventist church. What is the church going to do? We're not talking about what individuals are going to do. Every generation of the church, every generation has an opportunity. God sends life sins, the universe sins, the enemy sins, the devil sins, whatever you want to call it. There, the evil is persistent. And every generation has an appointment to make its decision about how it is going to deal with the evil of its generation. The, 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 the structural evil, the systemic evil, the cultural evil, the spiritual evil. Every generation has its raison d'etre. It has its reason for being, has its moment in time. And we're not all called to be prophets, Reverend Pamela Lysi, but we are all called to prophetic moments. We are not all called to be prophets. But at, at least once in all of our lives, we're going to have to face a prophetic moment. You just may just be a, an usher, but you're going to have a moment where you're going to have to make some decisions at the usher board about some derelict who drifts into the church smelling and clearly is has, has has been drinking and you you got a you got a prophetic moment are you going to see them are you going to escort her out the door you may not be a prophet but you're going to have some moments when you got to decide between right and wrong justice and injustice righteousness or evil You've got some moments living under the empire of capitalism and militarism and racism and misogynism and scapegoating is you're going to have to work and act and think prophetically, even if you are not a prophet. Ah, Reuben, you don't get out. You don't get out from having to make a decision just because Joseph is so obnoxious and arrogant. That is not the point. The point is right from wrong. Tony Morrison says evil is constant. You can think of different ways to murder people. And you can do that in all kinds of ways. But and you can, but you have to be an adult, she says, to consciously, deliberately be good. And that's complicated. 
I, I just I just came across that quote today. So let me let me just kind of say it again so it get in my spirit. She says, evil is constant, and even a child can think of ways to be mean to somebody. But to be good, to be deliberately good, that takes a kind of seasoned growth. And that's complicated. You know, nobody puts it until Tony Morrison puts it. To do right, to do the right thing. Ah, uh, to do the right thing, even when it costs you. How do you know it's the word of God? Yeah, you know it's the word of God when it even make it even pisses you off. Yeah. When you know when it is the right thing, when it inconveniences you, when it disrupts and it inconveniences your now it may be the word of god how do you know it's the spirit of god when you feel when even you have been convicted yes shout yes dance let's yes run around the church ah oh, but did you feel conviction shine your light god if you see anything that shouldn't be Take it and remove it from me. This old wretch that I am. Oh, I used to hate that kind of language when I was a young, a woke Christian, a wretchness, this worm that I am, this wretchedness. Oh, who shall deliver me from this, uh, this, this body of sin, this flesh, as Paul says, oh, I'm a wretch and all of that. But, you know, after a while, when you really get honest about who you are, you got to go through some stuff and realize you ain't always the victim. Sometimes you are the perpetrator. You're not always, there are no pure victims. We're also perpetrators. Y'all, I can stay on here all night long and I do feel the anointing right now, but I, 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 I've got to let go right now. I just want you to know tonight I'm feeling that to choose good, to choose right, to choose justice, to choose holiness, to choose the right path when it is so much easier to go down the bad, path, the bad path is a choice. And God help me make the right choice. Lord, give me the courage to know the difference between right or wrong. God, give me the wisdom. Give me the courage to do what is right. Give, give, make, give me peace for what I cannot change and the wisdom to know the difference. You know, I just butchered that whole translation. But nevertheless, that notion that what is good cost, what is right cost, we can have as many conferences as we want like this. But until you are willing to pay the price, To, to share wealth, to give up some of your privilege. To even as Jesus says to the man at the pool, well, now, I mean, I know you, I know you marginalized and I know you invisible and I know you've been hurt and I know nobody will come in and help you, but do you, you want to be whole? Because you know, it's going to cause you to be whole. So we can talk about all the people who keep coming into the water and keeping you from being able to be healed. And, you know, I got a whole sermon about that. But let me let me just talk to you who are the perpetual victims. It's going to cause you to give up your perpetual victimhood as well. Uh -huh. What are you trying to say, Dr. Weems? To redeem Reuben is to ask ourselves over the next couple of days, what kind of Christians do we want to be? What kind of Christians are we discipling Adventists to be? We have done an excellent job with laws and injunctions, the thou shalt not, and who's going to hell. But what is salvation in a pandemic, post-pandemic, in a multiracial world? What really in a crumbling empire what is salvation again? And what are our ethics? As more as Haitians and people are coming to the border now, what, what, what do we believe now? Oh, by the way, what does Christianity look like in the face of a crumbling empire that is attempting to shore itself up 
by closing its boundaries when it ain't about their boundaries. It's about your very values. It is about time saying your time is up. A new world is coming. Yeah. And so redeeming Reuben, it would ultimately be the very one that Reuben hated who would have to redeem the story. It is Joseph who would look at his brothers who had done him wrong, who had sold him off, who had sought to kill him, but then lied to the father who says what you meant for evil. Hallelujah. God used it for my good. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Now you got to get old enough to know that there is some good news in that right there. But what you meant, what you meant to destroy me with became the very thing God used to build me up. The very thing that you meant uh, to keep me from is the very thing God used ultimately for me to make possible for even your remnant to live. Ah, Joseph had a dream, but God had an even larger dream for all of us. And I believe as I close that that dream, whatever that dream, that, that multi-coded, uh, that multicolored coat that Joseph had is the coat of a world that is changing as a result of this pandemic that was changing before this pandemic. It is a church that will never be the same again. It will be a church where we are forced to do church differently. It is a world. It is the upside down, tossy turvy world. I do not know what the future is going to hold. I have, I have no great prediction. I have no great vision, but I do take heart in, jo in, 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 in John on the Isle of Patmos. Yes, I, this is where I do go New Testament. Where he says, I was on the Isle of Patmos and I saw a new heaven. And I saw a new earth. And it is not our task to try to tell people what this new thing God is doing that is going to cost all of us. But it is to point us to a new heaven and a new earth that will cost all of us, that will, all of us will have to bleed for it. All of us will have to have stripes for it. All of us will have to drink vinegar for it. All of us will have a crown of thorn placed on our head. But I saw a new heaven and I saw a new earth. And it is the multicolored coat of Joseph that God will redeem. It is the job of the preacher to not say what the new heaven and a new earth will be. We do, it doth not, it doth not, the King James, it doth not yet appear what it shall be. But it is our job to say there is a new heaven and a new earth. And as the King said, I might not get there with you, but I want you to know there is a promised land. There is a place where even Reuben will be able to be redeemed that even the Rubens of the world will be redeemed because it's all in God's hand. Me, I'm going to err on the side of love. I'm going to err on the side of love when it comes to my, my queer family. I'm going to err on the side of love when it comes to my trans family. I'm going to err on the side of love for everything I've been taught by a white supremacist church to hate, despise, to say that ain't God, that ain't biblical. I'm on air on the side of love. And in the judgment seat of Christ, I want to hear Jesus say, Renita, I'm, I'm, I'm going to live my life so that I might hear Jesus say, you were too merciful. And when I hear that, I'm going to smile. I'm going to err on the side of trying to be too merciful. Let Joseph, not only let's not kill him, but let his dream live. God bless you tonight. 
Let's redeem Reuben. Good night, and God bless you. And may God bless you. And may God bless you. What are your your? Yes, go ahead. He was muted. Ladies and gentlemen, come on in, Woody. You're off of mute. Okay. All right, gentlemen. can you hear me? Yeah, yes. we you, man. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. We just want to thank you for such a mighty, mighty word. Yes, I mean, yes. I, I was so happy. I was texting Auntie Cynthia. I was texting Sister Peggy and just telling them how blessed we are for such a season as this. Um, you presented Ruben. We saw in the chat that ways we haven't even conceived it before and how you have talked about how we have compromised and have compromised so much that we don't even realize we're losing our very souls. I had to put it in the chat. This is something we need to put in before every constituency meeting. Every election, we, we need this sermon preached. And I see, I can say it because they don't pay me, Woo. but we need this sermon preached mm -hmm. because this was truly inspired word of God. I'm this happy to awesome. have Pastor Christian Josiah, our secretary for the um, Conscious and Justice Council. And we just want to pray for you, um, Dr. Wings. We want to pray for you. And we also want to do a prayer of confession yes. um, as a result of this message that you brought to us. You know, we don't want to just hear it, but we also want to be changed by it as you have challenged us so well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Pastor Josiah. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey, All right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, 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 I preached my lipstick off my lips. So. Uh, Go oh, ahead. Hold, okay. that thought, hold that thought. Let me let, let mama go get her lipstick. <laughs> That's yes, all man. right. That's Please. all right. We, <laughs> hey. we gonna we air. We gonna air on the side of love. <laughs> you know, if we want to be the mirror. We gonna time. tell you if you put the lipstick on your lips or forget to your teeth. We want to be oh, the man. mirror for you, and you doing that so well. So I'm good. a southern woman. I'm a southern black woman. We it's don't. All right. we don't we don't come out in public. We don't even go to Kroger without our lipstick. That's true. No matter of fact, when I see you in Nashville, I'm going to bring you some lipstick. Just know it's coming. Oh, <laughs> Just man. know it's coming. Oh, man. What's yeah. the brand? What's the brand? Let me know the brand so I don't mess it up. <laughs> Mac, baby. Mac, baby. Mac. Mac, 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 Mac. I got you. I got you. What color? What shade? What shade? Uh, in, any color that's that's buried. Buried, buried, any buried. That's the side. Hold me to it. When she sees yeah, me, I got you. <laughs> she going to get her Mac. And it's I going to be you, a I, I got you. To know. I got Thank you. you so I got much. you. Doc, you so Doc, Dr. Dr. Weems, you have, you have blessed us tonight. You have challenged us tonight. Uh, for those of us who are pastors in, in this space, I know we have people who are watching on YouTube as well as Facebook. So the numbers that you see here are just a microcosm. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, our tech guy said that we we're going to make sure that that video, this this message is going to be replayed over and over and Thank over you. and over oh, until we get it right. Until we get it right, man. Thank you for but, blessing but, uh, us. Hold on, Pastor go Josiah. Ahead, for those who are, did not have a message ready for tomorrow, mm. if you're going to plagiarize, just give her some credit. That's, that's yeah, all yeah, we right, 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 right. <laughs> for those who didn't have a message for tomorrow, if you're going to plagiarize, just give Dr. Yeah, just, Reeves a credit. Just, quote, you, just quote the preacher. Quote the preacher. Quote the preacher. Amen. Yes, man. So, yeah, we want to pray for you before you leave. Please do. Um, and then we're going to have some announcements for those who are uh, in sure. this space. Let's bow our heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, Lord, we have heard a word from you tonight through Dr. Weems, Lord. Uh, Lord, what, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for allowing her to be relevant and real. Uh, for for allowing her, Lord, not to sugarcoat this message, not to, not 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 to make it sound a little too good or or, or a little too high, Lord. It cut straight to our hearts tonight, uh, Lord. We have heard, Lord, that there's a little bit of Reuben. Uh, in all of us, oh God, and Lord, we first of all, uh, even as we pray for her and for her, for your Holy Spirit 
to renew her. Lord, we pray first of all, Lord, for forgiveness tonight. Lord, we, we, we confess our Reuben-like sins. Lord, we confess the times when we, we, we compromise that, that those 1,000 little compromises, oh God. Lord, we, con we, we confess, Lord, that when we should have done what the old folks sang about, Lord, and be a, a, a shining light uh, uh, to the world, Lord, and, and, and that light shone on us, Lord, but we ran and we hid. Uh, and so, Lord, tonight we confess. We confess, oh God, that we have not been who yeah. we said uh, we wanted to be, Lord. We, we we took on the name Christian, Lord, but we were not uh, Christians, Lord, in those spaces, Lord, in those times, Lord, when when, when it was inconvenient for us, Lord, we, we backed off, Lord. We didn't keep our foot on the pedal, oh God. And so, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness tonight. Lord, we claim your word. First John 1, 9, that reminds us that if we confess our sins, not run away, not hide, not have another excuse for not standing up for justice, but if we confess our sins, Lord, you being Jesus, you are faithful and you are just to forgive us of our sins, our individual sins, but even our collective sins, oh God, as a church, Lord, that we didn't stand up in the 40s and in the 50s and in the 60s they couldn't find some of us and in the 70s and in the 80s and the 90s even with the george floyd uh, uh killing lord we uh some of us were, were, were a little silent lord we we were not where we should have been in the space lord speaking up for justice and equality god forgive us oh god forgive us oh god we who took the Reuben options many times, Lord, forgive us, oh God, forgive us, Lord, as 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 every generation has its prophetic appointment. You don't need us to be prophets, Lord. You just need us to stand for what's right. And so, God, we are praying that you would give us just a little bit more courage, Lord, just, yeah. just a little bit of Joshua courage, Lord. Help us to stand up for the right, even though the heavens might fall around us oh god lord let it be us uh because of this message because of this word lord help us to recognize the times in which we live uh lord i pray that you will pour out your spirit afresh on dr weems lord every virtue that has that she has poured out tonight lord i pray that you will pour it right back into her tonight lord i pray that she will even be stronger because of what she has done in this space tonight lord i pray that you will bless her with a double portion of your holy spirit lord as she goes forward in this work lord i pray that we will catch the vision that she has shared with us tonight lord that when john in revelation sees this this body of christ this church that is without spot or wrinkle lord that it that it, that it looks like like heaven oh god from every people from every nation and kindred and tongue and yes, people, oh yes. god let us be in that number let us be in that number standing on the sea yeah. of glass lord bless her ministry lord bless uh bless her her family lord bless yeah. those who are in her her inner circle lord yeah. i pray yeah. uh lord that she will continue to do great things and even greater things you said that we would do in these last days lord lord thank you for her presence thank tonight you. thank you for thank you. uh for her just uh taking the time even as she travels to be with us tonight and lord tonight yeah. We are praying as we close that we would not have just been hearers of the word and, and, and readers to the word, readers of the word and listeners to your word and watchers of your word. But, oh, God, give us that double portion of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to be doers of the word. Let us not say it was good that we had been in this space but Lord, We didn't do any good when we left this space. Oh, God. Give us your Holy Spirit so that we can do what we have heard. And we will be careful not to take any credit to ourselves. We're not going to pat ourselves on the back or on the shoulder. But we will be careful to give you the praise. Give you the praise. Give you all the honor and give you all of the glory that belongs to you. And we ask it 
and we plead for it in the name of Jesus, we pray. Let all God's children everywhere said amen. Thank you. And amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Dr. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you and good night, everybody. God, God bless you. All right, all right, Doc, Doc, we, what a word, what a word, what a word. Oh, I'm gonna go back and revisit that word. Oh yeah, on, oh yeah, a couple times. Multiple <laughs> occasions, multiple <laughs> occasions. But man, we still have a convention. Thank God we still yes, have sir. a convention. We came out the yes. gates roaring, but yes. guess what? It's still a convention taking place. We just didn't stop tonight. But yep. tomorrow, systemic racism, unseen mm. wounds, the mm. Lucille Byer Symposium, sponsored mm. by Adventist Healthcare. And mm. my, 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 we got a dynamic line up tomorrow. And you don't want to miss it at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time, 7 Pacific, 7 Pacific. But I'm looking forward to it. Dr. Yeah. Marissa Leslie is mm -hmm. putting that together. Um, once again, you know, she's dynamic in her own right, a psychiatrist. Psych oh, man, I'm getting my psychiatrist. Psychiatrist. <laughs> the psychiatrist, and she's That's doing right. that. And she's got some guests, none other than Pastor mm -hmm. Dr. Jamie Colazar from Ooh. the City Temple Seventh day Adventist. Fire, Church. man. Fire is Diane coming. Diane Wallace Booker from yeah. the um, U.S. Dream Academy is going to be there a part is. of that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dr. Mm -hmm. Marilyn Link. Is going to be a part of that excited. Dr. Zach Ritter is going to be a part of that excited about that. And is there anyone else that I'm forgetting? Zach Ritter, yeah, we called them all out. Yeah, so you if you it. don't have, make matter of fact, tell somebody, you know, don't just yes. keep it to yourself. Tell somebody what's taking place so they can be a part of this. Whether you come on YouTube, whether you come on Facebook page, but more importantly, come to Remo and get engaged in yes. the virtual convention, come into the space so you can chat and talk and verbally connect with each other. Cause that's what the fellowship is all about. That's right. And then at 1130. <laughs> go ahead and talk. I, I, I know I wanted look, to set you up look, for it. Look, Doc. Hey, you, you sure did, man. 1130 y'all. Uh, that will be 1030 uh, central time uh, for those who want to, uh, sneak away before you get to your regular worship service out here. Uh, you have permission. I've just given a whole bunch of folk a little permit, uh, some freedom out of here, Woody, in the central time zone, in the mountain time zone. Uh, none other than Pastor Dr. Deb Lear. He said he's not a doctor, but he's he, he, my doctor. He's the honorary. Uh, Pastor Deb Lear Snell is going to bring us a word from the Lord. I'm so glad I don't have to preach after Dr. Weems. Boy, I tell you, I feel light, man. I feel light. But uh, we know that he's more than capable on taking us to that next level. Uh, and so, y'all, just, just come on into space. Come on into space. Uh, we are going to be having it on YouTube. It's going to be on Facebook as well. Uh, matter of fact, when you get into your uh, space, we want to invite you to go ahead and share that link. Go ahead and share. When you, when you come on tomorrow, at 10 or anytime between 10 and 11 30 go ahead and share that link i believe woody is going to be one continuous link from 10 o'clock so you don't have to come out uh or start a new link uh and we're going to have a powerful sabbath morning in this uh conscience and justice council uh council virtual space dealing with hate and liberty statements conversations or actions i think dr weems has, has reminded us that it's that it's time for action you know, we've, we've done a lot of talking. We've written a lot of statements. Uh, we've had a whole lot of conversations, uh, but but we need to follow through like 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 uh, Pastor Swanson and the others, uh, Dr. Miller and the others shared earlier today. We have to be willing to take those uh, proverbial hits uh, and do what is right. Turning it over back to you, uh, Dr. Woods. At three o'clock, at three o'clock, um, you already see him. <laughs> Pastor Josiah will be joined by his co-host, Melissa Reed, the Associate Public Affairs and Religious Liberty Director for the North American Division. And we're gonna tackle the topic, misogyny and the believer's responsibility to our sisters. Let me say it again, misogyny 
and the believer's responsibility to our sisters. It's going to feature Elder Dana Edmond, the Executive Director of the Office of Regional Conference Ministry, Elder Pastor Lola Moore Johnston, the Lead Pastor of Restoration Praise Center, Carolyn Forrest, the Associate um, Secretary and Director of Human Relations for the North American Division, Josh Pierre, Associate General Counsel for the General Council of Seventh-day Adventists, Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, and then Dr. Jennifer, Dr. Jennifer, the founder of Project Safe Church. Oh, that's good. Look, we're not, we're not shying away from any conversation. Uh -uh, Let's be clear. Uh -uh. If you don't want to be, how can I say, pulled, or you don't want to feel any tension, if you want some, some stuff that's going to tickle your ears, the Conscience and Justice Council Virtual Convention is not the place to be. Uh -huh. But if you want to be stimulated and have the question staring you in the face, what uh -huh. must I do to be saved? That's you it. want to be in the convention. And now you want to be at this convention. But not only do you want to be here, you want to tell somebody else and bring uh -huh. somebody with you tomorrow Amen. at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, 12 noon Pacific. I want to encourage you to come out for this very important conversation because it's high time. Yes. We deal with this issue about our responsibilities to our sisters. It's Amen. high time that we stop playing musical chairs and Past speak time. to the power. Past, Past time. time. Past time. Thank you, Pastor. Past, Past. time. <laughs> and so come and be a part of this discussion. And um, I can assure you, Mm -hmm. We will not sugarcoat this situation. Oh, I can no. assure you. You see who Pastor Josiah is. Let me make it real clear. Is one of the co-hosts, and they are very clear on their Amen. responsibility Amen. not to sugarcoat anything in Amen. this transparent and real conversation space. Amen. 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 The afternoon continues. Uh, I don't know if we want to give show all the slides with this conversation by this uh, powerful author, Robert Erickson, Theologians Under Hitler. Let me tell you that that title of that book that he wrote alone should help us begin to think about what's going to become in liberty and justice for all that's sponsored by Liberty magazine so he's going to take the mantle after our conversation ends at around 4 15 eastern tomorrow at 4 30. Uh, we're going to go into this particular presentation it will be powerful it will um I, I believe that god is trying to save some of us through these conversations uh, i really believe that man and so uh come on back invite someone as as, as as Dr. Woody has shared, you know, don't don't just keep it to yourself. Go ahead and share uh, and, and and spread these links uh, on tomorrow afternoon, and then right after that uh, at six and hold o'clock. Hold on, Bettina Krauss oh. will also join us. Oh yes, the new yes. editor of Liberty Magazine will join us and share her vision for Liberty nice. Magazine. So happy to have Bettina. But you do not want to miss Dr. Erickson because he would yeah. do a compare and contrast mm. between theologians under Hitler and theologians yeah. in 2021. I'm just Man. here to tell you, if you really want to know what's going on about religious mm. liberty, mm. and if you're a religious liberty purist, you're going to mm -hmm. want to hear mm -hmm. this topic, liberty and justice for all. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, the next I... one, go ahead and promo the next one. Okay. All right. Real quick. And then right at six o'clock, uh, we're going to have our millennials. Uh, we're going to talk about the Gen Z and millennials. Are they invisible, isolated, or are they included uh, in, in, in not just statements and conversations, uh, but, but as far as action is concerned, you know, I'm, I, I believe in the, in the book of Mark, man. I believe in the gospel of Mark. Scholars say that Mark was a man of action. Uh, and, and, and these uh, this group uh, is going to join us uh, tomorrow at six o'clock and they're going to share uh, about what they are doing and what's going on and, 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 and how we can, uh, for us gener generate Gen Xers and others, how we can help them uh, to finish this work. Claudia Allen, I call her an activist, a social activist. She's a preacher. She's an author. Uh, I believe, I always tell her, you know, if, 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 the, if the spirit ever moves her to come, 
come come work for us. You just gotta you just gotta make that one call. Timothy Gillespie, the lead pastor from Crosswalk Church, doing some powerful things in ministry. Justin, co-founder of that Christian uh, vlogger, uh, he's going to uh, share some of what he's gone through. Pastor Marcus Laravo, I know him real good because he's a member of the Central States Conference family. Pastor the Allen Chapel Church, some of Adventist Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, Melissa Preddy, who's an entrepreneur and a mother, uh, she's going to share in her own in her own way. And as many of you know Minister Ronnie Vanderhorst, and you know he doesn't stutter when he brings it. Co-founder of Prepare Our Youth. Uh, these folk are going to be uh, in this space on tomorrow at six o'clock Eastern time, sponsored by Adventist Healthcare, uh, and and it's going to be a powerful uh, conversation. And I believe that that our, our Gen Zs and our Millennials will be motivated uh, on tomorrow doing this conversation. Uh, go ahead and wrap it up, Woody. And last but not least, we have the world-renowned pastor. Mark Finley, assistant to the general conference president, will close us out with our theme, Hate and Liberty Statements, Conversations, or Actions. We had the Old Testament for Dr. Weems. Pastor Finley is going to come to us from the New Testament in Revelation. So you do not want to miss the closing, the closing um, ceremony with our regards to our Vespers with Pastor Finley. So we just want to thank Amen. Um, God for what he is doing, how he is blessing. We want to continue to thank our AV team who is making this possible. Um, Kennedy Concepts, want to thank them and give them a shout out and their team. Amen. And then thank our, our colleagues, our Conscience and Justice Council. You saw some of them tonight. You'll see more of them tomorrow for the team effort and bringing all of this together. Um, this is not something that just happens, but it happens through the power of the Holy Ghost, and we are indebted to the Holy Ghost for bringing us together. Once again, we're gonna have a time for those of us who are in this space for fellowship, and for those who are on Facebook and YouTube, we're gonna bid you good well. And uh, Pastor Josiah, if you wanna close this out with prayer, and sure. for those of us in the Remo, we will go ahead and have this fellowship. If you wanna be in the Remo tomorrow, check us out, to, um, go to, um, send us a note, contact your, one of your PAR leaders so that we can make sure that you have the information. Or better yet, if um, Brother Sheldon can put it in the message for the general chat so everybody knows how they can get on tomorrow, that will be greatly appreciated. But once again, for those who want Facebook or YouTube, we'll be right there tomorrow. I'm Pastor Josiah, thank you again. Thank you, thank you. Father God, Lord, we thank you again for what our eyes have seen our ears have heard lord our hearts did burn within us tonight lord and and lord you have found those uh recesses uh lord that may have been hidden and and you have found those things lord that uh we we were not as faithful to you as we should have been we have already asked for your forgiveness and now lord empower us uh to do the the things that we have heard uh lord be with us as we separate from this space uh give everyone a peaceful night's nice rest and then wake us up uh to see the light of another beautiful sabbath morning uh, and, and we will be careful, as always, to give you the praise. Thank you again for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Right there in the site. Right there in the site. You can get it from Brother Shelton. Thank you so much. Right there in the site. And it's right there for you to click on and register or to give to someone else or to give to someone else to click and register so you can be a part of this virtual space. Worship service taking place tomorrow. God bless you. Good night. And let's go fellowship for those who are still in the Remo. We want to talk to you right now.